said that in regard to any more uh, being integrated into European society, they would be unwelcome to a large extent. Um, by many people, yes, they would be. They, um, they weren't seen as being you know, equal to uh, the people in the area. And uh, he told the court if you're aware of the defendant's occupation. said that a more was found at the scene of a crime after it had taken place, he would be the most likely suspect in that crime. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, would you say that that could have anything to do with the fact that the crime took place in the locker room and that only he and the victim were in it? Obviously. No further question. Thank you, Steve.
Hey, this is Michael Cassio. Uh, I'm second in command to a fellow, Holly Wallace. Uh, and uh, yeah, is there anything else you need to know? Um, I'd like to start off by talking about Othello. Um, who is he? I, I, Othello was a great man. Um, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to consider him a dear friend of mine and uh, to have had his trust, even if just for a short time, um, as his second in command. He's a good friend of mine, Desdemona. He was her husband, and I know that they loved each other very much. He was nothing but loyal and noble throughout his time, and uh, it's, it's really sad to even have to be here. Um, in reference to this case. Now I'd like to ask you a little about your of Cyprus. Um, were you present when Othello first got back to the doctor and turned to his work? I was. Um, I was waiting for him uh, on the island already, and I was uh, waiting for the whole rest of the game to get to the island. Uh, yeah, that was it. What was the interaction between Othello and Desiree and Othello? Oh, ha, ha, ha. She observed herself with her own opinions. Excuse me, Mr. Cassian. He has to be observed with her own opinions. That was a mistake. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's 
seem to be. I, I, I at that it's particular not the point. Same question. Okay. There was well, there's so many questions. Uh, uh, um, ask a question that would probably have to hire her right now about that point. Why? <laughs> 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 I'm still asking about what his opinion of a broad characterization of the person question is. I heard what he said. <laughs> Your Honor, in this case, if I may, to give an opinion on seeing this witness. <laughs> what we need to do is to isolate our question to factual observations from the witness. Oh, okay. Do you remember any of what he said? Well, my factual observation of the scenario. <laughs> Is that appropriate? Well, we're to your death. Yes, we are. <laughs> You're saying? <laughs> oh, question. Yes. Sustain. Excuse me. Uh, you know, you have to be able to hold the drugs. I did. Okay. Uh, what was it like on the battlefield? Um, in my time spent with him on the battlefield, he was, um, it seemed a little like he didn't quite have a respect for life. I, I, I mean, I guess, I guess what, we're, what I was taught in, in my training, um, which was more, which was more, um, oh God, what's the word? Uh, more recent training than his. He uh, he'd been longer, you know. Sometimes things change through the years as far as what's okay, what's not okay. But I was taught to have a, a respect life and only um, do what I have to do, and not necessarily go beyond that in terms of um, the sacrifices made of those lives on the battlefield. Um, in the case of Iago, from what um, I saw next to him. He, he seemed a little, I don't know, it was going so far as bloodthirsty. Like there was this, this, this need to, to do more. Objection. Once okay. again, the improper characterization of the person in question. It's what I saw. <laughs> you're so, you did not, you're not just resonating. That the um, question, you know, you're smart to be able to figure out if she's on hair front or something. Yes, specifically. Just you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to oh, okay. allow, allow the testimony to go forward as the defense counsel has mentioned. Uh, we're going to be able to parse through some things that may be potentially opinion based or factual <coughs> based. Since this is a bench trial, I'm going to let the, uh, let the testimony continue. We'd be a little bit more careful if this was a So you characterize Yahoo as having a having a very good respect for life as you do. What's Bridge's disillusion? <laughs> Don't worry if I say anything again, it's just gonna be an interjection. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um it, the conclusion that I, I made about um, Iago is that we are very different people. Um, and uh, I, I would like to think we're better or for worse, but in this case, I, I'm afraid it might be, might, might be for worse um, as, as far as our, our con conduct on the field. Now, are there any specific behaviors that Iago, of Iago on the field that would bring to um, as I mentioned before, I, he, he, he didn't have that respect for life and, and was willing and seemed almost uh, very, fi very fixed on the idea of, of killing whoever and whatever um, he thought should be as opposed to what or who uh, needed to be. Um, so I I would have to conclude that that was his 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 nature his being his um being that <laughs> that 
objection, once again, improper characterization leading to a conclusion. Yeah, your objection is done from the record. We can okay. proceed. Thank you. Oh, moving on, uh, what was the fellow like starting to talk about the building? Yeah. I already said, a fellow. Fellow's a great man. Um, he was noble. He was very uh, diplomatic and, and reserved. And um, really, any other good word I, I could think of, um, which would be too many right now, um, I, would, uh, I would put on him in the battlefield. Um, he was an excellent leader um, and someone who I. I never would have ever imagined being able to call a friend just because of how, how great he really is. So you characterize him as professional? Yeah, yeah, I, I'd say that. Jack, was he respected by his men? Sorry, can you? Was he respected by his men? Oh, yeah, I mean, certainly this man. Uh, I think that kind of everybody, we, we knew if a fellow was around, we wanted to do our, our very best. Um, I mean, Othello's the reason, I can't say so much now, but I mean, he's the reason I really, I really cleaned up my own act. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I could, I, I could serve under him. How did Othello talk about his battle experience when outside the military? How did he, t his what experience? How did he talk about his battle experience outside the military when he was not actually on active duty? Oh, <laughs> and then lots of great stories. Um, he, it seemed like uh, his, he always had no, he had nothing but positive words to say. I, I think that he he had this mind for it and this this love um, for his country and his his people. Um, and he he had a, a lot of good things to say. Moving on, I'd like to ask you why I felt specific. Thank you. 
translation. He knew that the witness cannot know what Mr. Iago did or did not know about his sobriety. The witness had a friendship, a long friendship with Iago. I believe they talked many times. I'm sure that the Iago had a way of knowing this, especially as he passed his friends by the death. Where are you getting this information? I'm going to sustain the objection at this point in time if you establish your personal knowledge of what Mr. Iago knew or didn't know. All the questions you may get in. At this point in time, I'm sustaining the objection. Were there any times in which you told the other directly that you were recovering alcohol? I had um, a lot of times. Um, after after you know a long day, we would you know sit around with a fellow nearby and kind of exchange you know pers personal stories that might be helpful um, for as as current uh, helpful to know about each other as far as our strengths and our weaknesses. And I consider my, um, my need for, um, for alcohol um, as a weakness of mine. And so I had disclosed this information to Yaga previously, which is why um, at at the time that I was on guard, he offered me wine. I knew that I could trust him um, in that he would look out for me as far as my consumption that night. Now, you say you were on duty. Was the other aware of this? No, he knew. I mean, we, we yeah. have to be in, in our... In our, in our uh, in and now, would it be uh, against regulation to offer another soul to drink? Would it would be against regulation one soldier to offer another soldier drink while other soldiers are on duty? Um, it certainly it wouldn't necessarily be um, choice behavior. I, I think that because of Iago and I's relationship um, as friends, um, our relationship, I could. Um, I, I knew that he that he would it would it would be more okay um, with with our with our general um, if he if I had a drink um, I didn't think that um, you know a, a drink should metabolize with someone on me in, in such a such a bad way as it did. And you continue to offer your drink after this first drink? Yes. Did. Did you at any time indicate that you would rather? Um, I, when, upon him offering my my first glass of wine and my second, I I did I did say no, but he was very um very see just he seemed persistent that I that I that I take this drink. Um, and, and kind of, I mean, as far as what I was feeling at the time, it, would, it, seemed, it seemed like he was pressuring me, trying to coax me, sort of demeaned me, um, and, and made me feel like I, I should, should do this, um, and I, I, I feel sort of, um, hurt the trust that I have in him, even today. Okay. Um, so after all this, did the fight occur? After uh, what? After you had grown up, you said the fight occur. Yeah, that happened. Okay. Did y'all ever try any way to watch her you that you're wrong? I don't can't really say that watching over me was his exact action. Seems sort of like um seems sort of not I don't want to say neglect. It was just he wasn't he wasn't looking out for me in the way that I would look out for someone who I knew who had been drinking. After experience, how do you feel about fellows just sleeping? I don't, I don't, I, I don't, 
story of day, but I think it's. Wait, sorry. I think maybe I heard the question wrong. I said after this experience, how do you feel about Othello's receiving the wheelchair? Oh, oh, sorry. I think it did his dismissal, and I was like, Othello wasn't dismissed, and that'd be terrible. Um, my dismissal, however, um, was. You know, I I always heard that you reap what you sow, and in that in that way, I knew that I was to be responsible for my actions, even if they were very drunk actions. Um, but they they still occurred at my own hand, and I I knew I, I had to respect. Othello's decision because I respect Othello. Okay. So we're going to have to put later on dialogues. Were there any times you saw about Othello and saw him as great as a teacher? Yeah, there, there was an instance when I um, had really needed to talk to him about, um, it was after, after my dismissal from my position. <coughs> And I, I knew that I needed to go talk to him, try to clear some things up. And so I went, and I saw him. Um, he, yeah, he was, he was in one of the scenes, which I'd seen before, but this one seemed more intense, uh, a, lot, a lot stronger than any that I'd ever witnessed. I was anybody here by the time of the review? I'm sorry, what? Can you speak a little, just like a little slower? Was anybody nearby at the time other than you? Uh, yeah, uh, Ia Iago was there. He was there with, with Othello. Okay, and what was his behavior or reaction to the seizure? He seemed pretty nonchalant about it. Um, he, he immediately, he, um, he, he wanted me to go away and come back later. Um, so, so I did. I, I figured, you know, he may have it under control. He's he's worked with with Othello before, and I, um, I I don't know if he knew about Othello's seizures, but I would imagine he would after being around Othello for all that time. This wasn't the first time it ever happened. Okay. Um, had you ever seen him before? Othello? Had sorry. Had you been focused with Othello? Before? Before? Um, yeah, yeah, um, I, I, um, I mentioned that they, but they ranged on a, a scale of like where they, he almost just got a, a glazed look in his eye and then sometimes they were a little, a little more movement driven. Um, but yeah, I, I'd seen him even in the time that I, that I've known him. Okay, did he ever speak during the episodes? He, yeah, sometimes he seemed he might be okay, just in, in far, as far as sometimes his speech was, under, it was understandable, but it was nonsensical, and so it was kind of this, this babble, almost, um, of just almost like the words from his mind would get strung into these sentences. Um, and then there were times when it was just, it was just the way he said this, though he had no control over what he was saying or doing. Okay. Uh, I understand you were a go between between Othello and Desdemona during the first show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was your impression of Desdemona and Othello's relationship with Father and Fortune? Oh, and um, well, Desdemona and I, we go way back. Um, I, you know, she's. She's one of my, my closest friends, I, I would have to say. And um, so, of course, I, I would do anything for her. And whenever she mentioned that she took a little liking to Othello, um, of course, I, I couldn't be miffed because she's a beautiful woman. But I know that they were very happy together. Um, and so I, yeah, they, I, I, I thought their relationship was great. I, I Because I knew. Othello in the way that I knew him as um, as a general I knew that he would be like that he would you know be an even better husband for my friend. Okay. Did this change all after the marriage? No, uh, you know I they they seemed so happy together and it just seemed like they
they wanted nothing but to be around each other. They were always making each other laugh. And just, it was a lot, of, a lot of good times in that marriage, it seems, yeah. yeah. Thank you. No Cross-examination.
I was used to be able back up back when I was a drinker to you know have, have a glass of wine and a meal and it wouldn't, wouldn't do anything to me. Um, and so I kind of, you know, a couple glasses with the, with the meal. <laughs> Dinner's gonna get pretty long. But and so it wouldn't really take that effect, so I figured it might it wouldn't be the same. And you know, it turns out it turns out it wasn't the same. So when you had your very first glass, you willingly chose to drink it, correct? Um it was my hand was on was on the glass, but it was um, after already having been uh, had my had my hand had a little questioned already, and so I think that anytime someone's say so given a dare, it gets you know you rise to the challenge. A competitive spirit comes up, and that's what happened, especially with Yama, because I knew that. He and I's relationship had been quite the same ever since I'd been appointed um, to lieutenant, and so that competitive spirit has always kind of existed between us. So, if I'm understanding, you are a trained soldier who was trusted by Othello to be the second in command, yet when your, as you put it, manhood was questioned, you gave up your sobriety pretty instantaneously. Is that Correct? Am I understanding the events correctly? Okay. <coughs> so, Iago and I, I know each other for a bit through friends. A friend doesn't sit around mocking one of his other friends to a point where it's not laughable. In this case, it was laughable. Yes, I took the drink. But it wasn't necessarily as per you know what I what I probably would have done if I if I could take it back. Yes, but at the time I did it because Iago has this way where he he it, he just knows how to get under my skin, and in that case, that was one of those things where that's that's what did it. But at the end of the day, he did force you physically force you. Yeah, but, you know, they say six and stones don't break your bones and words will never hurt you. Words can hurt you. Uh, speaking of hurting, the night that you became intoxicated, did you not get any fight with someone? Uh, apparently I did. It was, uh... I don't, I don't really remember exactly how swords were drawn and we were running, but I came out of this, this uh, sort of browning out, blacking out, whatever you want to call it, a little episode, and only to realize uh, what was before me. But that was not a conscious decision. I am not that, not, not that, that kind of person. Okay, so it is not in character for you? It was, yeah, it was very out of character. I am not, I do not consider myself a violent person. Um, though I, you know, I, I have, I'm very good at separating my, my work life and my personal life and what I do on the battlefield is different than what I do on, on the field's events, okay? Very different, very out of character. Okay. <laughs> I, um, it depends on what, I mean, there's different, um, levels. I don't, I wouldn't say drunk. I'm like, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling fine.
I say, it's like air of omission kind of thing. Like it's lying, but not really, but it's around it. <laughs> My friend Cassio was there, 
Iago was there, Amelia was there, and a few other men. Did you have any significant conversations? <clears throat> yes. Um, when we were waiting, shortly after we had arrived and we were, um, you know, being reunited with Cassio and other friends, um, Iago started to um, more or less berate Amelia, which I noticed seemed to affect her to the point that I interceded in his little conversational jest to where he was making some pretty, pretty negative and derogatory comments about women that I didn't particularly enjoy hearing. What happened um, that night? Did you celebrate? Oh yes, that night we had a huge party. Um, it was kind of great. It was like a, a welcome home fellow and true party slash. We never really got to celebrate our marriage, so it was a big, big to do. Dancing, singing, you name it, the whole whole nine yards. Was there any disruption that night? Yes, there was. <laughs> I actually ended up, Othello and I kind of retired a bit early, the party was still going on, um, but we went to bed, and shortly thereafter, or so it seemed, I don't know how long we were asleep, we heard this large commotion that woke us both up. And what happened? Um, I don't know all the specifics, because I wasn't there, but I know there was some sort of altercation in which my friend Cassio happened to be involved. What's your relationship with Cassio? Cassio is a family friend. We have um, known each other for many years. He's like a brother to me. Um, but I was very fortunate that he, um, you know, and he served as the go between between me and Zello, as you know, you heard from him. But. Um, yeah, Cassio was a very good friend. And did Othello reprimand Cassio for destruction? Othello did reprimand Cassio. He was dismissed from his rank as, you know, it was per, per Othello's discretion and probably per whatever pertinent military guidelines, rules they have. But um, I know it was a very difficult decision for Othello to make knowing, you know, having a relationship, having a friendship with Cassio, but, you know, he knows when it's time to do his job, he's got to do what his job requires him to do. And how was it going back to Marcus? He was very shaken. You know, it was a very difficult decision for him to make, and, you know, it, he seemed to be very stressed out. Um, he's prone to headaches amongst other, you know, fits, but really I think he just started having headaches more frequently and I don't think he got enough sleep to begin with. I tell him that all the time, you don't get enough sleep for the work that you do, um, but yeah, he started having headaches, like worse, stronger, almost probably like migraine, like I don't know, but it seems to, to start to debilitate a little bit. My handkerchief. Um, it's one of the first things Paul gave me. Uh, it was his mother's, actually, which is it's my prized possession. But um, at that point, when he was having these headaches, I felt so unprepared. Like I, I wish I could have done more to try to alleviate his pain. But I tried to use my handkerchief as kind of like a, a compress, more or less. I mean, I'm not a doctor. I don't know. I don't really know all that much, but you know, I tried to help as best I could. Do you remember what happened to the handkerchief? I don't. I believe um, in that rush because um, I was trying to herd him into a dinner that he had to be at um, that we were hosting. That I must have <coughs> dropped it after trying to assist him, but I don't. And it, it pains very much to say that I don't know what happened to it. What did you do for dinner the next night? The next night, I went to dinner with Iago and Amelia. 
And um, it was one of the longest days of my life. It was just, I, I don't even think, I'm so glad they told me to come to the door with them. Because I don't think I even ate at all that day. I was just constantly moving and doing things and whatnot. But um, yeah, so I went to dinner with them and I was kind of lightheaded, but I just needed to eat some food. Um, but yeah. And how did you make it after dinner? Um, after dinner, I started to feel worse. I, um, you know, I thought the food would, I mean, some water would help, but um, I started feeling um, very kind of tense, um, lightheaded, very kind of nervy, I guess you would say. Um, I, that was my plan. I planned to um, go to bed early, hoping, you know, sometimes all you need is a good night's sleep. You can bounce back. I'm young, I'm pretty resilient, and so I figured just go to bed early. But um, I had Amelia come and assist me, get me ready for bed like she always does, and I just was exceedingly restless and nostalgic. I started thinking back. Um, back to stories that my mother used to tell me, and uh, the song, of, and it was my head, I, I, everything started getting slightly hazy, and there's one point where the, the shutters, um, I was so jumpy, and it was, um, I needed to go to bed. And do you remember anything else about the night? Shortly thereafter, I started having difficulties breathing. Um, the muscles around my throat got extremely tense.
me in the hazy. I don't know what I heard. So you don't remember um, telling him that you loved him? I always tell him that I love him. But did you also tell him at the time that you feared him? I don't know. But um, he. Objection, Your Honor. It's cross examination. So you have your mouth. Go ahead. Um, so you don't remember Bell telling you that you were on your deathbed? No. And you don't remember begging the Lord for mercy? I don't think you understand what was happening. The gravity of this situation? I couldn't breathe. Did you ever tell that um, Adele that you never loved Cassia? I don't know. But, um, so let the record reflect that I'm showing the post and counsel that has already been entered into state, um, into evidence of state secret at one. May I curse the witness?
thank everyone uh, due to the time. We're going to recess for the day, and we'll reconvene on Wednesday. Uh, I've been advised that we can expect two more witnesses, and then closing arguments. And we anticipate having a verdict.